Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Goose Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm having a fantastic day. It is hump day, and I'm hoping that you're getting over the hump. I don't know if you realize this or not, but we are less than a month away from training camp opening. And the Cowboys, at least, seem to have pretty much everything together for what they're planning on doing this year. You know, we, we're not, you know, we might sign some free agents. We always sign some bottom tier free agents and things um, during the, during training camp and stuff. We always do that. But, you know, as far as the Dalvin Cooks or the uh, DeAndre Hopkins and stuff, we're, we're, we're feeling that we're good right now. At least that's where the organization is at the moment. And I have to say that we are in a better position than we definitely were last year without a shadow of a doubt. 100% better position than we were a year ago. Now, interesting thing, um, as I was coming back from the supply house picking up some stuff, saw a post about Micah Parsons wants to be 255 pounds. Um, Micah was about 235, 240 maybe when he was first drafted, and he's definitely bulking up. And the reason being, of course, is he's playing more defensive end than linebacker. And that extra muscle, if that's really muscle and doesn't slow him down, is going to help him to be able to come with force, to be able to go ahead and use more leverage, and to be able to hit that tackle and shed that block, but still have the speed to be an ultimate weapon. A couple of years ago, uh, Micah Parsons' rookie year, I remember having a conversation uh, with his dad. Um, and the question was, after him becoming defensive rookie of the year, was seeing how well he was as far as a pass rusher would it be advantageous for him to be a pass rusher, defensive end, more so than a linebacker? When you look at the premier position of getting paid, it's edge rushers. It is edge rushers. You heard Micah Parsons saying that, you know, he wants to basically be an edge rusher. And that's where Dan Quinn said, pump the brakes on that one. You know, you're going to be doing all kinds of stuff because of position, position flex. We want you to be coming from all over the place. So that evolved to being eight different spots. You know, he could be dropping in coverage. He could be a middle linebacker. He could be a defensive end. He could slide down at the nose for all we know. The thing is, is when you have a guy who is as dynamic as he is, and he is dynamic, you want to get the most out of him because ultimately, his greatness, the thing that's going to make him even greater is the fact that it's not just his numbers, but the effect that he has on those around him. So people will look, and this is the thing that's kind of funny, is people don't understand how when you play offense or defense, it's 11 guys. One guy, if one guy doesn't do their assignment and the play fails. You can have great numbers and have the defense end up being bad. But when you have guys that are great, like Micah Parsons, it makes guys who might not be as great really good. Give you an example. Dante Fowler, his last year in Atlanta, I think, had four and a half sacks. And most people said, oh, man, that guy's done. Man, you know, he's got nothing, right? Well, he was the best player on that defensive front. So teams looked and said, we're going to stop that guy. Dante Fowler comes to the Cowboys where you have tons of pass rushers and, of course, Micah Parsons, and does not start a single game. I want you to understand that. Dante Fowler did not start a single game, but had six sacks last year. And you can attribute that because people are having to worry about saying, Micah Parsons on his own can blow this play up. Dante Fowler might, but the odds are that Micah Parsons definitely will. So we need to make sure we take care of him first and then worry about the other guys later. And that's why other guys will feast. Now, it's funny because Micah Parsons, with all the attention that he gets, now Micah Parsons loves the attention. He will definitely be, when he's done with football, and actually even during football, he will be a social media star. If he wants to be Pat McAfee 
and have the Micah Parsons show, the sky's the limit. So I'm, I'm just saying, right now, everybody would tune in to Micah Parsons. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Micah Parsons was talking about the attention that he's getting from everybody now, you know, because, of course, he is very vocal. Um, I love the way he put it, where he said, when you go on safari, you go to see the lions. You go to see the lions. And the lions don't run. The lions don't run. They stay there because they're the king of the jungle. That lion, he ain't running. He ain't scared. And if you go back to what Jimmy Johnson used to say, if you're going to talk the talk, then walk the walk. There's no doubt that Micah Parsons is talking the talk and he is walking the walk. I can't wait for the season to get here. And Micah Parsons, you know, the thing will be, here's the thing that will be kind of crazy. Let's say hypothetically this season, Micah Parsons gets 20 sacks. Some of that will be attributed to Micah Parsons being a better player, you know, getting now that he's had two seasons in the NFL. Now you start developing your moves, your strengths. You start understanding guys that you're playing and how to setting them up. Some of that will be Micah Parsons. But some of that will also be the defense around him. When you have Stephon Gilmore, who's getting a guy covered as long with Diggs, and you have that the group of safeties of J. Ron Hurst and Donovan Wilson and uh, Malik Hooker that are covering guys, you're going to get more sacks known as coverage sacks because the quarterback is looking, but there's nobody open. So he's holding on to the ball longer. The other part of that will be is because you have a guy like Hankins and Mozzie Smith in the middle that the quarterback can't step up in the pocket and he's going to get sacked because the walls are closing in. And that will be attributed to the effect of having a better front. Micah Parsons, who is great on his own, with better talent around him, is going to be even better. And that's where teams need to fear Micah Parsons because the lion, he's roaring and he's coming after you. There ain't no stopping that lion right now. So with that being said, I got to go back to the supply house so we can get some couplings for the HVAC and some zip ties and stuff. And I got to crawl up underneath the house to uh, do some work here on the uh, uh, hooking up the sink. Look at this. Look at this sink. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a thing of beauty? And uh, I got to get working on the deck for our inspection for tomorrow. So as always, you know we'll be bringing you any news there is on the Dallas Cowboys, but we're in the silly season. Hold your breath time and pray that none of your guys get in trouble. I'll see you soon. Peace.